All right, what's up, guys? So, Ray she just uploaded a video titled "Can the Ace Family Stop Being Cheap Scammers?" Like literally, like literally, just pay your bills, fam. I don't know why I was best. I was gonna mess up hard on that word, but anyways, yeah, I was like looking at the description. I was like, I know it had to be because of this YouTuber and um, TikToker uh thing that's been going on so yeah i'm like that's why i'm like yeah with these guys i'm like i um i personally wouldn't want to do no business with austin mcbroom if that's what it's gonna be about so that's why i'm like yeah if, it, if it's gonna be anything i'm like hey yo let's just go to a gym uh squash all this like you know what yeah let's obviously prepare for the you know if we are if if there were ever a time where i were to get challenged to, um to a boxing fight i'm like okay yeah it's like let's just go to a gym eliminate all of that set up our cameras make our own money don't worry about no big pop like popular event because at the end of the day ain't nobody trying to watch all these like small minor fights unless it's some other names that we know about but if not, yeah, but anyways, um, yeah, bro, he, he just, he, he messed up bad with this event, so, uh, let's, let's go ahead and see what goes down in this video. Guys, if you haven't, make sure you go subscribe to my good friend Ray, her main channel, Hot T, her personal channel, Ray Rahimi, and her business channel, Build Your Pocket, but anyways, let's get into this video. Hi, welcome to me reacting to hate comments. Skip to this timestamp to skip this. Today's comment was oh, okay. on a video where I talked about Dave Portnoy saying that Jeff Wittick milked his accident for views. I'm pretty sure in the same video I also said that I'm in love with Jeff Wittick. But this person says, victim blamer. Victim blamer. Victim blamer. Oh, victim wow. blamer. Victim blamer. Comment deleting victim blamer. I never delete comments, by the way. Comment deleting victim blamer. Hey, victim. So, and I think it's funny when people, they say that. At times, it's like, yeah, when you're spamming the comment section saying dumb stuff, like, YouTube will just automatically, you know, put you in, like, the spam. So, it's like, yeah, the comment's not going to show up in the comment sections because you're just spamming the same stuff over and over. So, it's just, it's funny to me when people, when they say things like that, I'm like, do you not see the setup on what you're doing? Like, you're spamming a person's comment sections. Even YouTube don't want to see that, so. Victim blamer, why are you deleting comments? Because you're f***ing spamming me exactly. and YouTube is automatically deleting your f***ing exactly. comments. Exactly. Victim blamer decided to wake up and claim victims of life-changing physical trauma. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> and explaining it for money, huh? I hope you lost your channel with that revolting take, but I doubt most made it far enough into your video to catch it. Victim blamer, disgusting victim blamer. Are you in Bruh. David Dobrik's cult too? Victim blamer, are you in Scotty Sire besties? After you made this video calling somebody with a traumatic brain injury who almost lost their vision a scam artist, when did I do that? Essentially, did you go to sleep feeling warm and fuzzy? Literally laughing at how stupid you are. Are you real life? Victim blamer, That's Jeff wild. opens up and talks about how his life was ruined. You, wow, he needs money, sad. Girl, you are vile. Victim blamer, ew. God, I hope your friends and family don't Bruh. come to you when they go through things. Do you tell them they're milking it too? Victim blamer, you're welcome for the engagement. It's to highlight how much you disgust me, substantially, indescribably, in every single way. You are trash. Victim blamer, your best friend. <laughs> That is wild. Friend. Hey, I have to tell you something. I was assaulted. You. Wow, you're totally milking this. <laughs> when did I say that? <laughs> Ew, victim blamer. Take 20 showers and pray to whomever that you don't get struck by lightning for being the grossest thing ever. Victim blamer. Brush that your teeth is trash. Wild. Someone comments saying, could you maybe fuck off? <laughs> I love you. He's like, well, she keeps deleting my replies to you, so I'll just say nope. And I hope you have a long, full life that doesn't end early by your own hand as you make good decisions for the world and humanity at all. People that like that are so weird, bruh. Like, they are so weird. Like, it's people like that. You honestly, you gotta carry a weapon with you. If you know that you like that, you're near people like that, or even so much as in the same area of a person like that, you gotta like pick up a fork or something, pick up a fork and a spoon, and be like, hey, yo, I'm ready for combat. But yeah, pe people like that, I'm like, hey, yo, bro, do, do us a solid go just just please go get you a plane ticket go to the bermuda triangle legit like just draw a triangle and just sit there and meditate bro just meditate and just don't leave that triangle until you are at peace with yourself you are not at peace with yourself bro like sense. 
so this was actually from a while ago but this person has been like commenting on my channel on all my videos like that's stuff that's wild. like unrelated to the situation since you're reading hate comments will you read this one yeah you made it congrats <laughs> remember when you said jeff was exploiting his busted eye for money victim blamer no i don't remember that that's it was gross wild. and it happened even though you deny it pumpkin show me a clip of me saying that on another video on another day he comments hold up the victim blamer supports the Walches, I am shocked. Oh, this was on my OnlyFans video. I said that I'm not supporting her. Whatever, I'm not even gonna get into it's this. It's like, that's her thing. She does these uh, OnlyFans. That guy, I'm like, hey, yo, you need help, bruh. Like, that's, I, yeah, because I'm like, I've reacted to pretty much like every um, one of like Ray's videos and stuff. I honestly don't remember her saying no stuff like that. I'm trying to think. I don't even remember her saying anything, excuse me, along those lines. Where it had anything to do with, like, Jeff Wittick and his eye situation. So, yeah, that's, I'm like, I, um, dang. Yeah, that guy's weird. Thank you so much for supporting all my videos. I know you watch all my videos at Nope. Thank you. I'm gonna go spend your AdSense money. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I'm being a bitch now. All right, on to the video. Bye-bye. Let's see if they commented on this video. Probably did. Oh, they actually, they did it, huh? Wow, the one time. One time when they didn't hey say guys, anything. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Here before no. will never stop. I feel like as soon as I start to forget their existence, a new scandal pops up, and that's basically how they're holding their relevancy. There is a lot to unpack with what's going on with them, but before we get into it, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. All right, let's get into it. So remember the big boxing match a couple of weeks ago <laughs> where Austin McBroom completely annihilated Bryce Hall's face and won a million dollars? Well, Austin must have spent that one milli faster than he got it because it is possible that the Ace family may be facing eviction from their multi-million dollar mansion in LA. Mm. Allegedly, they were served a notice stating that they could face eviction from their home as a result of not making their Dang. mortgage payments. Now, of course, any family at risk of losing their home is very upsetting, but it's kind of hard to sympathize with Austin and Catherine McBroom when they've been so far out of touch with reality for so long. It was two houses before, and we literally combined them together. The internet has watched them for years shamelessly flex their endless supply of Gucci clothes, luxury cars, and extreme That's wild. wealth. But it seems that they might have bit off more than they could chew when buying this house. It's just sad to know that they're three. It's an, it's a, it is a nice place, though. Like, I will make sure of it that I had the money to afford that house, you know, like, so I'm like, oh, OK, like, I'm, I'm good. Like, I, you know, I, I ain't got a trip about nothing. But yeah, I, I, I'm not going to be in a situation. I don't want to be in a situation where I um, I can't afford something and I'm sitting here struggling. Children so, yeah, that's uh, losing their home. And I that ain't that good, bro. Catherine, get their shit together for the sake of their kids they are yeah. the adults in this situation and losing their home would truly be no one's fault but their own also like this isn't even the first time that the ace family has been accused of not paying their bills they were allegedly not paying some of their like other home bills before which is honestly crazy because they have so yeah. much money like pay your freaking electricity man along with <laughs> potentially losing their house the ace family is I'm about to say i'm like nope something don't look right <laughs> that is i'm like nah her lips wasn't that big then look at us i'm like nah that man you yeah I'm, I'm i'm positive i've seen people that look like that maybe without the hair like they got a buzz cut but i've 100 I've seen people that look like him her not as much but him for sure i think some serious legal issues two lawsuits have been filed in regards to the ace family one lawsuit was filed against the ace family in september of 2020 by a social media mm. company called subify llc the second one, however, looks like it was filed by the Ace family against a construction rental company called A Hearn Rentals in April of this year. Both mm. lawsuits are pending, but I'm curious to see if any more details will eventually come out. Also, does anyone remember that dramatic cast series they made about their lives and how hard they have it while moving into this multi-million dollar mansion they designed? I've never thought about stopping, but I feel like if we... I've thought about it. How did... Singing Kill Your Grandma. What song was she singing? I was the one singing. 
I just remember thinking I was listening to them complain about how rich they were for like an hour straight. Who knows, maybe losing their home could serve as a wake-up call and maybe humble oh, yeah. the Ace family back down to earth, but I wouldn't Move place good old fashioned on that, considering the one father of house. family is Austin McRoom. And now I take you to probably the biggest balcony in the world. And it's honestly so big that we don't even know what to do with it. The real question Dang. is, where is all of the Ace family's money going? Like, think about it, guys. Yeah. They have a constant flow of income from YouTube videos, merch, the random sports events, and skincare lines, constantly scamming people and fans. Like, they even release their own juice. <laughs> like, wow. how can they not afford to pay their house payments? That money has to be going somewhere, clearly not towards their house. Not paying the money he owes seems to be a common trend for Austin. Allegations have recently been going around that Austin owns a huge part of the company in charge of paying everyone who participated in the recent boxing event, the TikToker versus YouTuber event. And many people have come forward nearly a month after the event saying that they have yet to be paid for it. Like, imagine Jonathan Coachman nah. a month after the event saying that they. That's crazy. No, nah, that guy, he uh, he used to be um, uh, in like wrestling. I'm a wrestling fan, so. That's crazy. He talked. He even they talked have on yet this. to be paid for it. Like, imagine Bryce Hall had to like have his face deformed for nothing. Like, he's I not know. even gonna get paid. That's messed up. <laughs> that sucks, man. That's man. Also, an Instagram <laughs> user by the name of Pam Sophia claims that she has a car rental company in Miami, and Austin owes them seventy five hundred dollars. Austin has allegedly ghosted the company, and they haven't been able to get in contact with him. From what huh. I've seen, it looks like they set up some type of deal where Austin could rent their cars at a discounted price in return for him shouting out the company. Of course, Austin never posted anything about the company and also didn't pay the $7,500 that he owes. Wow. Is Austin just being shady and a I scam know. artist? Or does he genuinely not have $7,500 in his bank account right One now? Either two. way, what he's doing to this small business is so wrong and I hope that he faces the repercussions for his action. While the Ace family might be moving out of their LA mansion, Tana Mojo is moving in to David Dobrik's former LA uh, mansion. Yeah. Tana tweeted, I never that. thought in a million years I'd be buying a house from David Dobrik LMAO. What the f- he's like my landlord right now. I'm a little scared. It's kind of unclear if Tana is buying the house or renting. In this tweet, she says she's buying, but then refers to David as her landlord. This is confusing because landlords are only in regards to rental properties, <laughs> Tana. I would assume she's just renting, considering yeah. Tana isn't really known to be tied down to anything, and if she is, it never really ends well. Along <laughs> with posting several Instagram stories showing off her new place, Tana also posted a photo of her crying about not wanting to move from her current mansion into another one. Life must must be so hard for her sending happy thoughts and prayers hashtag speak it from the heart i find it coincidental that when david was going through his huge scandals involving dom and also the whole jeff excavator incident that tana didn't turn her back on him she stayed loyal as his friend and even posted a picture with him on her birthday but now that we know she bought his old house was she just staying friendly with him to get the house it's also strange because a Could big be. reason David moved was for privacy reasons. Fans were finding out where he lived and showing yeah. up to his house uninvited. So, like, that why would crazy. Tana move into a house knowing this? As a huge social media star, she should really be more cautious. Also, guys, just a little lecture from Medio. It is never okay to show up to anyone's yeah. house uninvited. It's creepy That's and facts. weird and such a violation of privacy. Hopefully this doesn't happen to Tana now that she's moved into this. So I'll never forget when somebody, I, because I, I've always have spoken on that. I've been speaking on that for years. And I'll never forget when somebody commented on one of the videos I made talking on that, saying, "Oh well, I, I, um, like I'm a fan of you, so I should be able to show up to your house. Like you should, like they're trying to defend that. They're trying to say that that's okay. I'm like, it's not okay." You don't understand that because people are crazy nowadays. You show up to my thing is this. I don't care if I don't overall agree with you showing up to my house because there's been times where friends have been like, oh, yeah, let me come over. I'm like, I'm not home right now or I'm, you know, I just don't really feel like being bothered. My thing is, is like, look, I don't want nobody showing up to my house it is my house like it's not yours and we got no ownership here so i'm saying like my thing is is if i go at you in a violent way like 
You brought that on yourself. Now, if it's some kids, I'm just going to be like, yeah, get out of here. Like, no, I'm like, I just, no. And I ain't um, freaking to have you guys come all the way out here. And it's like, yeah, people do like, oh, can I get a picture? Can I get, no, you can't. You ain't get no picture, no videos, nothing. I'm like, you ain't get no advice, no hugs, no signatures, no merch, nothing. Get out of here. I'm like, y'all talk bad about me if you want to. It's like, nobody ain't asked you to show up to my house. So, yeah, it's like, I, it's just, that's just one thing I'll never forget when somebody was really trying to defend that. I'm like, yeah, you could tell that person, you're going to most likely um, get arrested for showing up to a person's house. Oh, but, anyway. It's highly likely considering so many people know where it's located. Now that yeah. Tana has moved into her new home, she, of course, has already started finding ways to be dramatic. Tana tweeted that she thinks the house is haunted, <laughs> talking about the house David Dobrik used to live in. Natalie, one of David's close friends who also lived in this house, replied ha 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 we brought ghost hunters over it's clean we checked i wouldn't be surprised if oh Tana yeah makes i do time. i i do i think that is the same house where they was like they had was doing some weird like uh thing they had like those you know like in them like ghost hunter shows they got like those ghost box things and then they were i thought i thought it was actually haunted because i was like they you could hear something but if, if they said the place was clean i'm like guess See, that's how much they got me believing in stuff. Now, I'm like, dang, they got mansions. They got nice-looking mansions in uh, California that's haunted. I'm like, you can't live nowhere, back bro. back on her YouTube channel talking about some over-exaggerated ghost stories. But, hey, maybe the place really is haunted. I mean, if I was a ghost, I'd choose a multi-million dollar mansion to haunt as well. <laughs> Influencer Corinna Kopp recently went on Logan Paul's podcast, Impulsive. They talked about her recent success in starting her OnlyFans, earning her over $1 million a day. At one point during the podcast, Corinna mentioned her hand was numb, and when Logan asked why, she said that she got some tattoo removals done before coming to the show, including her notorious David's Vlogs tattoo oh, that she wow. got on her finger way back in 2016. I remember this was such an iconic moment in one yeah. of David's vlogs, and it was really the start of David really pushing his friends to do things to provide shock value in the vlogs. David paid Corinna to get the tattoo, and at the time, Corinna said she was really broke, so she did it. And honestly, like, I would probably do the same. Like, it was like a thousand dollars or something, right? Or maybe 500, but like, hey, like, it's money and you're getting free tattoo. <laughs> Even if it does just say David's nah, money. I don't know about but that. But fast one. forward five years later, she claims that she's not going to let any man brand her anymore in reference to the tattoo and why she got it removed. What are you getting removed? Everything that's not like my little dainty tattoos. Are you getting the, the tattoo oh. that says David's vlog yeah. removed? Oh. I'm not gonna let any man brand me anymore. Yeah, Unless they're my um, hobby. Hobby, yeah. What do you mean, any man brand? Like You can brand me for the right price. That literally lasted 30 seconds. <laughs> no, but like. You're like, <laughs> never in my fucking <laughs> life will I let a man uh, brand me. Oh, no. Except I, for you. <laughs> no, I thought you were saying the fact that you were like, we're just friends, and then you wanted to brand me. You've, ne you've never, uh, never hooked up with Dave, huh? Mm, I mean, we never had. We've never done anything like I think I think the internet knows we kissed like one time way back when at his apartment Touch his wiener at all? Not really. No, not really. <laughs> no, I mean, maybe I, I never remember. I have a really bad memory This was I like I can see how that could be fun. This was like four four <laughs> years ago, right. by the way right. Well, personally, I think that it's huh. a little too late considering the video where she got the tattoo has over 16 million yeah. views on it I respect her for doing what she wants with her body Although I have heard tattoo removal is more painful than getting an actual no, yeah, tattoo. No, yeah, I heard. And yeah, I heard about that. So, yeah, good luck. So take this. That's why people they because um there is no there is a wrestler where and I'm like I would never ever and even if it's like okay she said like only it would be um her uh, husband. Damn, that probably won't work out either. That's why I'm like, nah, we got to be like 90 years old. We got to have great grandkids. And I'm like, even then, we still will probably get a divorce. But I'm like, hey, yo, like, I'm in my 90s. I don't even care anymore. So I'm like, if you want me to get a tattoo of your name, fine, so be it. I will be 90 years old in a tattoo shop, probably old and wrinkly. Tattoo artist is trying to, like, stretch my skin out so he can, like, tattoo it properly and things. But... Um, even then, but no, there was a wrestler uh, that got um, his wife's name tattooed across his throat. He said it was one of the most painful tattoos ever, but it was Sarah. And he ended up divorcing her. He's now married to a woman named Michelle McCool. Like, that's her That's her name. Michelle McCool. I think her last name is actually McCool. But anyways, um, yeah, it's like, bro, it's like you can't. 
Sarah ain't Michelle, like, so that's why I'm like, how is that? So he just got it covered up because he was, I think he, I don't know if he said he tried to get it removed and felt how painful it was, but he just said he just, yeah, he covered it up. So it's this wrestler named Undertaker. If you go back to some of his, like, earlier, well, not earlier days of wrestling, but, like, the middle-aged days of his wrestling career, and then he had, like, that Sarah tattoo, and now if you look, it's, like, all covered up and things. So I'm like, yeah, bro, you can't do stuff like that. A lesson from Corinna, you guys. Don't get stupid tattoos or do stupid things, or you might find yourself regretting it five years later. <laughs> Moving on, Jeff Wittick talked briefly on his podcast about the end of Frenemies. We've talked about this during this podcast. Jeff says that the relationship between Trisha and Ethan was toxic. Yeah. Ethan Klein reacted to this and talked about Jeff on his podcast, H3 After Dark. I don't know if Jeff was trying to provoke some dramatic reaction out of Ethan by saying this, but it's honestly so funny to see how nonchalant Ethan's response to Jeff was. Like, <laughs> he and Ela just agree with him. Like, yeah, dude, it was toxic. What's your <laughs> point? Yeah, that's toxic. Okay, I'm still friends with the kid with her. What's his point? <laughs> Ethan then throws some shade by bringing up how Jeff is still friends with the man who almost killed him, referring to David Dobrik and the excavator incident. Ethan and the H3 crew also reacted to the texts that Jeff recently sent to Trisha Paytas. In the text, Jeff says, poke away at my injury and it's going to end really bad for everyone. And this was obviously in yeah. response to Trisha's video about Jeff Wittick and Gabby Hanna. To which Trisha Remember responded, that. huh? And Jeff says, I'm not going to have internet beef with you. First of all, Jeff had to know that Trish would instantly leak these texts after yeah. she Oh, yeah. Them. So why was he okay with sending those texts, basically threatening her? Yeah. It's not a good look for Jeff at all, especially considering that he just came out of that huge scandal in regards it's like, to Yeah, being, bro, it's like the mafia days is over. You can't be carrying on like that no more, are, man. The night of the Dirty Dom SA. You would think that Jeff would at least lay low and not send texts like that, especially yeah. after freaking Trisha Paytas, the queen of exposing private conversations <laughs> to the internet. If you don't want beef with Trisha, why would you reach out to her in the first place? In response to the text that Jeff sent to Trisha, Ela responds by saying that Jeff is off the rails in which Ethan agrees. This is just my opinion, but the first text Jeff sent to Trisha gave a very threatening vibe. Like, yeah. what exactly does he mean by it's going to end really bad for everyone? I yeah, don't know, it's man. like when you say things like that, you're saying that to put fear in a person's eyes. Like, you're not saying that because of whatever reason it's like what other reason could you have said that like w w like why you know so yeah he he at the end of the day he knew he was saying he knew he was doing i'm like jeff don't say things like that especially to a woman like i don't care who the woman is it could be anybody of a crazy sorts you can't say that to a woman, bro. Like, Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. To me, it almost sounds like he could be threatening violence or legal action. Like, yeah. Saying. I don't know. It could also potentially Maybe, be Maybe. I don't joke know. But... Because Jeff is known for his dry sense of humor. And he does kind of make jokes like that a lot on his podcast and YouTube channel. But again, I don't know. Comment down below what your thoughts are. And lastly, here's Trisha Paytas' response to James Charles' return on the internet. Oh my god, James Charles may come back and just have a comment on it. Like, okay. yeah, okay, that's it. Because, like, here's the thing, and you know, because I was on front of me and we gossiped, not that I hated it or anything, but, like, I actually only talk about people, like, usually when it pertains to something that I have a direct relationship with them. Obviously, James Charles is, like, gross and creepy. Like, I, I'm glad, like, that's brought to awareness. But it's like, he's back, people forgive him. Like, there's only so much you can do because the people who were the victims, the minors, if they don't come forward, like, you know what I think it is? I think Trisha has just moved on to other enemies. She's moved on to hating on Gabby yep. Hanna and Jeff Wittick, so she just doesn't have any more time to hate <laughs> on James. But she was, like, for a moment there, very, very, very passionate about canceling James. So, like, yeah, I think she's just too distracted right now. She's going to come back hating on him in, like, a second. You can only shout <laughs> it so much, and then it's like, people will see it or they won't. I think he should go to prison just like Austin Jones, I think his name is. But, hey, he's back at the internet. Like, I don't really have too much many thoughts on it other than like he's gross and whatever. did that but guy go to prison that, like, i think i remember a name like that huh all the comments to me <laughs> that was I'll it have to look for that today's up. video i really hope that you guys enjoyed watching if you did please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe i post new videos every single week all right bye bye which is the biggest pool we could possibly make <laughs> we, we, one 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 we try we try to make it bigger but this is as big as we can make it oh my I'm like, people just be out here flexing. I'm like, here I am, you know, just.
I got it. I got a new microphone. <laughs> That's all I can flex right now at the moment. But anyways, um, yeah, I, I personally, I think, you know, yeah, I think uh, he, he, well, yeah, Austin McBroom, he, he, for one, for sure, he, he just needs to, he needs to pay the people, of course, that, but he, that man just needs to be honest. Like, if we want to be honest, he needs to be honest, because he's, he's, He's living a life of danger right now, and um, I honestly, I just think that it's, you know, and more so what I mean by that is the reason why I say that is like he's living a life of danger is because you're putting yourself in a situation where it's like people, eventually the truth is going to come out, and you're going to have to answer for some things, and then eventually it's like it's either going to be that you are cheap, and you don't like paying people um, for stuff, or you're broke and you can't pay people for stuff. So it's like you're going to have to be honest at some point in time. But anyways, uh, good video as always. Guys, make sure you go subscribe to Ray's channel, Hot Tea. Her personal channel, Ray Rahimi. And her business channel, Build Your Pocket. Like, subscribe to me too. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and peace.